Welcome back. We've joined Ashling in the kitchen. Ashling, you're making butternut squash. We're just saying, trying to cut that thing up is a workout in itself. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Like, genuinely, it is a troublesome vegetable, and the pumpkin is even worse. It's one of the only vegetables that I would... Not one of the only, because, like... If you need to get them already pre-cut, get your veggies pre-cut. That's one of the ones that if I see it in the supermarket pre-cut, sometimes I buy it because yeah. it is, it's so awkward to do. You need do. a sharp knife. So you what do. do you do? And what a lot you... of like, muscle, you need the physical yeah. Yeah. push down to actually cut through it and everything, yeah. What um, is the trick, sorry, just to peel it first and then slice it down the middle? Yeah, so top and tail it, take the top off, take the bottom off, and then gradually go through with your knife kind of segmented. So go up one side, back down the other, split it in half, yeah. And that is definitely the way to go. Um, and then but don't be a martyr. If you see it oh, in the yeah. packet, throw it into the jolly. 100% because it's, like, it's in the fridge section and it's in the freezer section in the supermarket. So it works. Oh, yeah. And it's handy. Because it's, like, freezer. Anything that makes life a little bit easier to get some veggies into us. Let's okay. do it. You know? You're making a real. You're flying away there. Yeah. What see, I've learned. I'm learning as I go. Martin King, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Every day is a school day. Oh, right? I, yeah. now. I, knew she was like, Marks. I am making a roux or a bechamel sauce, which is the basis of every good creamy sauce. Okay. You can make your creamy sauce on cream um, or you can make it on milk. So if you're trying to save calories, the fat content, making it on milk, you still get that beautiful creamy sauce, but you're, you're saving some. So that's why I'm doing this. And what are the measurements? Yeah, it's a, it's a little maths ratio, right? Yeah. It is, let's take 10 grams of butter, mm -hmm. 10 grams of flour, 100 mils of liquid. Okay, so that liquid 10, can be, 10, 100. Yeah, full fat milk, it can be low fat milk, skim milk, depending on what you're using. You can do half milk and half stock, which is really, really nice to get in like a, a chicken flavor. Mm -hmm. So what I did was melted the butter, added in the flour, and then you gradually add your milk until you get your lovely, thick, creamy sauce. And then obviously, if you want a thinner sauce, you can add a little bit more liquid. If you want a thicker sauce, you can add a little bit less. And I actually like to leave this a little bit thicker because when it's in the oven, it kind of melts and dissolves down a little bit. Just realize, you're like the culinary Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> because with the butternut squash and then the roux, because you've really got to store that. You yeah, really Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. Karate Kid, yeah. Remember, wax on, wax off. <laughs> Paint the fence. <laughs> Where do you the think floor? these muscles came from? That's yeah, what it is. You. It's the lifting and the chopping and the stirring. Uh, so it is. It's like a workout in itself. Another great little tip for this. To make this be a creamy garlic sauce, what I have done is I have my cloves of, of garlic and just with your, you know, your... What's that thing called? Jeez, I'm going garlic crusher. Right. Thank you. Garlic see, crusher. That's it. Looking to get there a gold star as well. Exactly. Um, crush it or just chop it up. But what it does is it kind of cooks in the sauce. So you're getting that lovely garlicky kind of flavour, which is really and nice. Would that be the base that you use if you were doing a chicken and broccoli bake? Yes. Like a straightforward. Yeah. The side yeah. you cook it at home. And for this pie, like I'm showing you this recipe that's seasoned up with the butternut squash and the spinach and the chicken, you could swap out and put leeks in. You can put your broccoli in. Um, you can do kind of have your turkey for that time of year. So this is. This is such a great recipe, you know, it, it's just, it's really, really versatile. That's your sauce pretty much done. So Next you added up, in some cheddar, just a handful of whatever you like in there? Vintage right? cheddar, yeah, nice. really, really nice. Just going to throw some spinach in here to wilt it. You technically don't have to, you could just pop your spinach straight in and it will cook, but I'm just going to give it an extra little second. Um, so that is cooking away really nicely. The butternut squash, as I said, right, I've peeled it here, scoop out the centre part, the little seeds, same as pumpkin seeds, you can toast them, a little bit of cumin on them, a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of oil in the oven, really crunchy, really nice, top of soup with it, so it's lovely. Okay. Oh, nice. And like I said, oh, cut it into segments. So all you're doing with that is just chopping it roughly up, spritzing it with a little bit of oil, and then you roast this in the oven separately. So this is going in the oven for about kind of 45 minutes. Um, oh, and it just softens up. Now, if you have little humans who might not like seeing big pieces of orange, um, so that's it. That's all I do with that and spritz it in, in the oven at 180. This is what it comes out like. Mm -hmm. Fully done. You can mash that up with a fork. Yeah. Blitz it, puree it in, stir it into your sauce. So you get this mm -hmm. beautiful, bright orange color sauce and it's really nice. Sauce done. Chicken. I am using leftover roast chicken for this. Half a roast chicken is going to feed four people. Okay, so I think Half like... Half roast chicken's going to Yeah, I've people. shredded it down. So, I mean, it looks a bit messy and you just get your hands dirty. But this is all the shredded down, the thigh, the leg, the little oyster okay. part underneath. And this is the chicken breast. Very sustainable view, Ashley. Yeah, and you have to be. Like, I think if you're buying yourself a good quality chicken, it's nice to get the Every best out of it. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, with all the extra bits that's going in, it's just padding it up and yeah. layering it up. I was going to say, uh, one chicken doesn't go far in our family at all. I guess when you're bulking it out with the mm. other ingredients you're adding. That's though. it. Yeah. And you're, you're trying to get your veg in. So, you know, I talk about that flexitarian lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. So it's make sure buying quality meat, quality chicken, 
extra veg and you know you're still getting your meat in and you're you know yeah. getting extra veg i've saved our little bit of liquid gold you know when you roast the chicken oh, yeah. so that's your umami going in there and if you didn't have that you could do your little bit of chicken well, i want stock. to know why wasn't it used for the gravy when you were roasting the chicken in the first place um because you were saving it for this i know i know there I know. you go there you, go there you go <laughs> saving it for the chicken. That's, lads, it's this easy. You're literally putting everything in the saucepan like this. And see the way it's quite thick, so it's not as like white sauce or as kind of runny as sauce. So nice and thick. Spinach is wilting very slowly, so I'm actually going to take some out and I'm yeah. going to put it in here. <laughs> and I want to show you the phyllo pastry because that is so exciting. Phyllo pastry is much lower in fat than something like your puff pastry um, or your all butter puff pastry. So it's brilliant for this. If you didn't want to use phyllo or you couldn't get it, it's normally in the freezer section or the fridge section, you could happily use, you could top this with potatoes. Look how creamy that is, isn't that gorgeous? And that spinach oh, will wilt nice. down in the oven as well. Um, you could top it with potatoes, you could top it with mashed potato, you could top it with sweet potato. Or even like breadcrumbs or a bit of cheese kind of thing. Absolutely. Like a crumble. Yeah. yeah, really nice. So paint this, this is your filo pastry, so it comes in long sheets like this. You wanna paint it with a little bit of melted butter and that's what crisps it up in the oven and makes it really, really crispy. So you're gonna bake this at 180 for about 35 minutes and you do want that beautiful golden color. So take it, scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So this is extremely rustic. Very satisfying to do Paint that. Paint up your That's other cool. one. Yeah. And then bake it, it's lovely and it's yeah. easy to do, you know. And like I said, it's shop bought pastry so it's quick and handy. So midweek dinner, this one is ideal. I'm going to get that you have one a on. minute and a half, I think. Yeah, that is ideal. So scrunch it up. Now, depending on how much pastry you want, you can go for three, four sheets. You can do two or three. So you can kind of, again, if you're watching the, the calories or anything like that, just you can do a little bit less. You're still okay. getting the lovely, the really nice crunch on top. So I'm going to do three of them with the melted butter. Full fat, real butter, obviously. Piling it on. So, I mean, look at that. Isn't it just... Oh, it's fun gorgeous. as well because you're getting the crisp and the crunch. And I want to show you the one that but I that's got to come out of the oven just looking amazing. Well, Just let's like this, check. Martin, you mean? You amazing see, like just this. Like just that. like this. <laughs> Isn't it just see. gorgeous? So that's what it goes in at. And it's going in at your oh. 180. Okay. 35 minutes and then it comes out like that so i'm going to dish you guys up. okay well while you're dishing up uh, anna has texted in please say hi to brad me and hi brad he's a big fan of derek ryan and has been going to see him live since he was seven he's 12 now and can't oh, wait okay. to see derek uh, in the new year that's brilliant uh, mine's not working so okay. we're done if you like aileen and limerick <laughs> more people should be talking uh, openly about the menopause especially ah. the likes of deirdre uh, who yeah. helps you see the funny side as well as all the hot flashes deirdre as well. is a breath of fresh air keep up the good work and making uh, a difference and making us all laugh. So true. I love her. I was girl crushing tonight. Glass, oh, look at that. This look how just creamy that is. And did you hear the crunch? I did. Yeah. I'm hitting the oven as well. Tell you. Perfect timing. <laughs> okay. There you go. Pass one down there. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Dig in, guys. Oh, my. Thank you. Oh, God. That looks so fancy. Like that. You know, if you were to serve that up, uh, if you're having a couple of friends over, yeah, that is that could work for dinner party. Midweek dinner party. That is all we've got time for tonight. Uh, thank you to all of our guests. <clears> and of course, to Ashling for the delicious dinner. As always, if you do want to catch up on our recipes, visit our Facebook page or you can search VMTV Food on YouTube. Okay. We're back tomorrow with the Eurovision legend Neve Cavanagh, comedian Garold Farrell. Uh, but now, uh, with a special performance, uh, here's Derek Ryan with his song, Carlo Tonight. Woo! Derek! London's a wonderful place But it's sure hard to find A familiar face Underground with my last 20 pound To see me through Till the next gig comes around Let the beer wash the tears from my eyes And fill up the hollow inside I never thought I could feel so alone Oh how I wish I was home in Carlo tonight. Oh, what Sundays I miss the most. When Dad lights the fire, Mom cooks the roast. But for now, let's take a wake up. Then nothing to do. So it's off to the pub. Let the beer wash the tears from my eyes And fill up the hollow inside I never thought I could feel so alone Oh, how I wish 
Let the beer wash the tears from my eyes And fill up the hollow inside I never thought I could feel so alone Oh, how I wish I was home Let the beer wash the tears from my eyes And fill up the hollow inside Yeah.